Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to learn another method of solving a quadratic equation. It is called the square root property. In order for us to use the square root property, you have to make sure that you have isolated the quadratic term. So the square root property says if x squared is equal to k, then x has to be equal to plus or minus the square root of k. Make sure that you put a plus or minus before the square root. Why is that? Well, think about what it means to take the square root of 4. What you basically are asking is, what number times itself 2 times is going to give me positive 4? If we think about it, 2 times 2 is positive 4, but so is negative 2 times negative 2. That is also going to give me positive 4. So when we are solving an equation and we're going to take the square root of both sides, we know that x can be plus or minus 2. Take a look at the first example on your screen. We want to solve this quadratic equation by using the square root property. It says x squared equals 8. In this case, the x squared, which is the quadratic term, is already isolated. So all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. But remember, when you take the square root of 8, it's going to be plus or minus. On the left-hand side, the square root and the square are going to cancel, so x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 8. Now we just have to simplify the square root of 8. What two numbers, one of them has to be a perfect square, that is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. So what two numbers will multiply to give me 8? And the answer is 4 times 2. So x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And we all know the square root of 4 is 2. So the answer is plus or minus 2 radical 2. Let's go ahead and look at another example. In this case, we have 4x squared plus 1 equals 7. Unlike the previous problem, we don't have the quadratic term isolated. So the first thing we're going to have to do is subtract 1 from both sides. We get 4x squared is equal to 6. So that we can isolate x squared, we're going to have to divide both sides by 4. So we get x squared is equal to 6 over 4. 6 over 4 can be reduced to 3 over 2. On this side, I'm going to show you how we're going to work with the problem if I went ahead and I reduced it to 3 over 2. Now, I am not going to reduce the problem on the left just because I know what's coming up next. I know that I'm going to have to apply the square root property and take the square root of both sides. On the left, the square root and the square cancel. On the right, I have to make sure that I put plus or minus. So I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6 over 4. Now the square root of 6 over 4 just means plus or minus the square root of 6 over the square root of 4. By the properties of radicals, I can split those up. And this gives me plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. If you take a look on the right hand side, what would have happened if I would have simplified the fraction to 3 over 2? I'm still going to get the same answer, but it's going to require that I do a little bit more work. So if I work with the problem the way it is on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides as I normally do. This still cancels out on the left. On the right, I'm still going to make that plus or minus. So I'm left with x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2, which I can split up as plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is not a perfect square. And one of the things that we can't leave in our answers when dealing with radicals is a radical in the denominator. So we have a process called rationalizing, which means that we want to get rid of this denominator of the radical in the denominator. And the way we're going to do that is to multiply both top and bottom by the same radical. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2. And so I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6 because the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6 all over the square root of 4 in the denominator, but the square root of 4 is 2. So notice I am right back to the same exact answer that I got the first time. As you get better with your math skills, one of the things that you'll be able to do is to anticipate the next step. And so by leaving it 6 over 4, it's actually made my life a little bit easier because I was able to get to the problem a lot faster. 
Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at one final problem. Solve 3 times x minus 4 squared equals 15. Again, we're trying to solve in this video these quadratic equations by using the square root property. In this case, we are going to have to isolate the x minus 4 squared. So the first thing we want to do is divide both sides by 3. When I divide by 3, I'm left with x minus 4 squared is equal to positive 5. Now that I have x minus 4 squared alone, isolated on the left hand side, I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of both sides on the left, the square root and the square cancel. On the right, I got to make sure that I put plus or minus. So I end up with x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. The square root of 5 cannot be simplified any further. 5 is a prime number. And the only thing I have left to do is to solve for x. The way I'm going to do so is that I'm going to add 4 to the other side. When you add 4 to the other side, it is best practice to leave the plus or minus part in the middle. So your answer is 4 plus or minus the square root of 5. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.